Hello, I'm Grim Rudu, and welcome back to Build Request, the show in which we take requests from the past and build them in the present, which is the past's future. And while that explanation might sound overcomplicated and unnecessary, I made sure to give it because it's thematically linked. We are, after all, today, trying to build the DeLorean from Back to the Future. You all kept asking me to build it. I don't know how in the name of Hades you expected me to do so. I mean, I've never even built a general realistic looking car, let alone a specific realistic looking car, and let alone a specific iconic realistic looking car that has been customized with small but unignorable detailing. I have been ignoring this request for quite some time, as I knew that when I got around to it, it would take a pretty long time to do the vehicle justice, and so today, when I found myself with a couple of hours free, I put on Back to the Future in the background and got to work. And so this request comes from Thomas Kinyon, DJ Octacool, Mega Man, The Cajun Gamer, Trey Rivers, Mr. Classy Tutor, Bob, and Connor. And no doubt some others that I've missed, I do apologize. The YouTube comment section has been a bit squirrely to navigate ever since they started updating towards the new analytics. But regardless, I digress. Back to the subject at hand, namely building the DeLorean from Back to the Future 1. There were some, such as the Cajun Gamer, who did request that I made it able to transform from Back to the Future 1 to Back to the Future 2, which by that I think he means that he wanted the wheels to be able to fold up and for it to be able to fly. I did briefly entertain the idea of trying to do this, as you can see, but quickly abandoned it, as I rather swiftly realized that it's going to take a long time to even try to get it to look like the DeLorean from Back to the Future 1 without considering the difficulties of it transforming. And so I have abandoned that for now, the vehicle you're seeing here in this video is only going to be the Back to the Future 1 DeLorean and not be able to fly as it does at the end of the movie. I might come back at another time and try to add that functionality, but for now we're sticking to the DeLorean from the first movie, excluding it at the end there. And I am glad I narrowed that scope, because this vehicle, as you see it at the end of this video, took longer than the full runtime of Back to the Future 1 to build. I mean, by the time I called it a day on this one, the movie had finished, gone back to the menu screen, the menu screen had looped a few times, and then the film had started playing again, and it wasn't until the Libyan terrorists had arrived again that I finally decided to call it a day. For the most part, all of the time I put into this vehicle went into making very minor changes. There's a lot of detail in the DeLorean from Back to the Future, and even trying to get its basic shape is rather difficult. And so in order to help that along, I made the back wheels lower down than the front wheels, so when it spawns in the game, the front of the vehicle falls forward, giving the entire vehicle an appearance of tapering downwards. It was important to do this as the gradient of the vehicle lowering towards the front is too subtle to achieve with wedge blocks without it looking silly. The actual wheels of the vehicle themselves are unfortunately not as hidden as I would like them to be. Unfortunately, that's entirely unavoidable as the shock absorbers and the mud flaps in the building mode have too large a hit detection and they simply don't allow you to conceal them without making the entire vehicle too bulky. So they're going to have to be on display, there's no real way to avoid that realistically, and we're just going to have to live with it. I mean, alternatively you could use the small wheels, but I didn't even try that as they would just look comically undersized. And still on the subject of wheels, when the DeLorean in Back to the Future manages to achieve time travel, it leaves behind the trail of flame, which I wanted to implement in the vehicle, and did so using a flamethrower. It's the same basic technique I used for the sand speeder build from Star Wars, as after all, if it ain't broke don't fix it. At one point early in the build, the vehicle was an odd number of blocks wide, which is always helpful because it means if you have a centered block and you need to put something on it, you can do so without throwing off the entire symmetry. Though unfortunately it became quickly apparent that the way I was doing it was going to be too many blocks, so I did end up having to narrow it by one block. The issue here is when you go to put the registration number on, it doesn't sit center anymore as there's no longer a center that you can actually place a block on. And so the lazy way I tried to get around this was putting both the plates at the front of the car to try to make it look like one large one, and not putting one on the back, as after all, in the movie, when it first jumps to the future, it does lose one of its registration plates. Is this solution great? No? Is it the one I went with? Yes, certainly. If you don't like it, feel free to change it yourself when you replicate the vehicle. I myself still haven't decided. In the end, after many, many, many changes, I managed to get the back of the vehicle looking pretty darn good. It looks actually surprisingly good, and I'm really quite happy with it. There was a long time where it was looking like a hatchback, and there was a long time where it was looking like a Jeep, but after a while it came together quite well, and I think it does look passably like a DeLorean. The front, however, I'm not quite so happy with. 
there wasn't no real in between here. It either looked far too blocky like one of those new dodges, or it looked far too thin. In the end, I went for this kind of in-between look. I don't think it looks very good, but if the look of the front annoys you too much, I suggest you divert your eyes to the back of the vehicle which looks far better, and just imagine that the front looks better than it does. And then finally I also went and added an EMP blast on the vehicle. That way, through the magic of video editing, I can make believe I'm jumping back to the future. And so there you have it. A DeLorean from Back to the Future in Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. If you'd like to see the grim builds of this vehicle, that will be up next week. And if you'd like to follow me on Twitter or join the Channel Grim and Grim Discord, the Echo Chamber, links to both of those are in the description below. And if you'd like a copy of this vehicle in your own save, stick around now for the layer by layer of it. So with all of that said and done, thanks for watching, and until next time, I have been and still am, Grim Grindle.